All right, let's get this show on the road. Welcome everybody to tonight's stream on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. I'll give a few minutes here for people to, to tonight's stream on join the up Pixelogic or have an ZBrush echo in the channel. <laughs> yeah, let me fix that really quick. There we go. <laughs> I hate when that happens. All right, so as I was saying, I'll give a few minutes for some people to join in. Uh, hang out, ask questions, chill, whatever you want to do. Um, let me know if you can hear me in chat. That would be fantastic. And yeah, uh, a little bit about me. I am Folygon. Uh, if you guys want to check out my stuff, you can just Google Folygon. You'll find my YouTube channel and uh, everything else. I stream here on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. Uh, if you guys want to check out more of my stuff, you can go to gumroad.com slash Folygon, or like I said, my YouTube channel. Over on my Gumroad, I have a bunch of courses, tutorials, brushes, materials, base meshes, all the stuff that I use in my professional work. Uh, we'll give a couple more minutes for people to pop in, and I'll talk uh, a little bit about what we're going to do tonight. Let me see if I got this guy in here. I do believe I do. All right, so we have been working for the past couple streams on this little shark pup, this little cutie here. Uh, the original 2D concept is by an artist by the name of Lily B Z. And welcome, Artin, Alex, Karina. How you guys doing? Welcome, welcome. Sounds good, awesome. What is on the table today? Well, you are just in time, Arden. That's what I'm about to talk about. So we have been working on this shark pup for the past couple streams here on uh, the past Tuesdays. And I have been uh, in the in the last stream. I've been I'm, I've been Ben for a while. <laughs> I think I've told that story in this stream before. If not, I'll tell it again later. I've been uh, sculpting this dude for a while. We started posing last Tuesday, and we'll probably do that a little bit towards the end of this stream. Probably more so working on some environmental stuff. We'll we'll get to that a little bit later. But to start out, we're gonna start here with our good pal, The Sphere, working on specifically the shape of this character's head. So, when did I release this? Let me check here. When did this come out? If you have not yet seen, over on my YouTube channel, I released a video a couple days ago called Understanding Form. Hello. And essentially, what this video is talking about is a term called a hit. And I'm gonna do a little overview of this before we get into it. But essentially, uh, if you guys wanna check out this video, again, it's on my YouTube channel. It's just a few minutes, uh, three minutes, three and a half minutes long. Go check it out. I think it'll help you out uh, in just kind of understanding where we're gonna go from here. I'll give a kind of spark notes -y, uh version of that, even though three minutes kind of seems like a spark notes already. But uh, let's see. Let's see how many pieces we got in here now before we dive right in. Uh, Sebastian says, awesome art, love the style. Well, thank you, man, appreciate that. I think we'll give like one more minute for some of the, some of the stragglers to pop in. How are you guys doing tonight? How's everybody doing? Working on anything cool? Feel free, uh, I always say this, feel free to share any links in chat to any of the cool stuff that you guys are working on. It doesn't have to necessarily be 3D art. Hopefully it's cooler than this little sphere I got going on. Again, we'll show off our little shark pup here that we've been working on for the past couple streams. I will be tackling this guy again towards the end of our stream. Let me grab the concept. I think it's over here. Let me slide that back over. So this is the original concept here, again, by Lily BZ. This one over here is by Park Jinsuki. I can spell that if anybody wants. Um, or we, You know what? We'll just Google these people before we start so we can find their stuff for you. Um, but yes, yes, so we'll probably be doing some environmental kind of like sandy, maybe a starfish. There's some shells over here that you can't see that are, I cropped this a little bit, so maybe we'll do some of that as well, as well as like the bubbles. Maybe I can show off some cool stuff with some materials and transparency in ZBrush, that's always fun. But yes, uh, for those that are curious about the 2D artists here, I might actually already have a couple of them pulled up, yes. So Lily BZ. L-I-L-I-B-Z, check her out on DeviantArt. There's the original concept again for you guys. And then Park Jinsuki, there's the spelling for you. 
and you can go check out Parks in, uh, Art Station. I was going to say Instagram, Art Station. Uh, but yeah, again, I am Folygon, and I think that's enough stalling for people to jump in and join us. The stragglers can catch up on their own. And as always, all this stuff gets uploaded over to YouTube. So no worries if you join us a little bit late. Uh, so excited. Love watching your streams. Well, thank you. Uh, Ari Daya, maybe? Oh, man. I'm so bad at pronouncing people's usernames. I always butcher them. That's just how it works. All right. So let's begin. Again, concept up here by Park Jinsuki. I made a YouTube video talking about what is a hit. And I'll do a brief explanation of what that is right now. So a hit, or more commonly, it's called a hit or a break, essentially, either or, they're interchangeable. A hit or a break is the point at which, uh, think of it as, we'll, we'll do a couple demonstrations. Let's grab very quickly, you know what, the, the default here is fine. I'll just grab a cube. So a hit or a break is the apex of a curve or the point at which a form changes direction. So for a cube, finding a hit or a break is pretty simple, right? It's right here on the edge where that surface changes direction. So we are going up and then we're going across the face of this cube. But for something like a sphere or something that's a little bit more curved, sometimes it's a little bit harder to find the exact point at which that curve breaks or changes angle, which is why I like to think of it as sometimes the apex of a curve or shape. So for instance, if we very quickly just kind of nudge this in and we'll start from tip and we'll go from tip of the sphere to the other tip, all right? So I'll draw a silhouette here. Right about here, that's where our shape changes direction. That's where it breaks. So we have one of these hits or breaks right here and then we have a straight, a relative straight. I did it pretty sloppily and pretty quick. And then we curve again. So we have that apex of the curve, and this is where relatively the surface starts to break and change direction. So I've taken some time already to outline some of these form changes here in this face and kind of draw some arrows. And uh, if people have some questions about some of this, we can talk about it as we go forward. But essentially, I have the outline or external silhouette for all the form breaks kind of mapped out and a few of the internal form changes as well. Uh, finding these hits and breaks is incredibly important and just kind of having the language to uh, articulate that and understand it and visually spend a couple minutes and maybe do a draw over like I did here, I think is super helpful and super, super important for translating stuff from 2D to 3D. So now we're gonna be doing the translating of 2D to 3D. So we got the sphere. Make sure we don't have any questions before we continue on. What's going on, Doom? Hopefully we've done a good job of the SparkNotes version off the cuff of hits and breaks. So I have a sphere and essentially what I'm going to do is just duplicate my sphere. I now have two spheres and I'm going to move this one in front. We, we're only going to block out the major shape of the head. I don't think this will take that long. I'm sorry if there's a lot of background noise. I'm, there's a ton of wind and rain going on outside. It's been really crazy out there. But um, hopefully you guys can hear me all right. Uh, so we'll be just blocking out the head, just the face. I don't think this will take very long. Uh, again, the focus being on blocking out the major shape changes, the major forms here. And... Yeah, depending on how many questions we got, we can maybe spend a little bit longer on this. So I'm gonna use primitives for the most part. We have one, two spheres, two different subtools. If you missed it, I did it pretty quick, duplicated a sphere, now we have another one in front. I'm using the solo mode to swap between those very quickly. I'll try to keep this um, as simple as I can here as we move forward. I'm using Dynamesh at a low resolution, which you can find under Tool Geometry Dynamesh. Pretty simple. I think most of you probably know how to use that, that have used ZBrush before. And I'll just Dynamesh both of these spheres. So for the most part, the back of the head here is it's, it's pretty much just a sphere. Maybe, if anything, it's a little bit elongated, a little bit stretched. So maybe we can play 
with that a little bit as we continue on here. For the most part, I'm just using my move brush to push and pull stuff around. If I go a little bit too fast though and I use a tool that you're not familiar with, just yell at me and tell me to go back. So now we want to work on what I like to call essentially just the shelf of the face. So I'm starting to shape this up and some of the first things that I want to look at, my pen will work, there we go, is start turning around to the three quarter view and just kind of getting an idea, the basic kind of shape of what we're looking at. I think for my outline, I've gone a little bit too um, uh, long in the skull back here, which is fine. We can correct that in the 3D. But some of the stuff that I want to be looking for is as we're wrapping around here, around the brow, we've got a dip in around the eye. So we have a break right about here. It's where that curve changes direction, remember? Hits and breaks. And then wrapping around the cheek and then curving back in around the chin. So that is what I will be focusing on. So I might be looking at the three quarter view and sculpting over here, but for the most part, I am looking over at that opposite side where I want that hidden break to occur. So let's start blocking out a little bit more of our information. And we can show how some of this, all these hits and breaks and all this mumbo jumbo can be a little bit more useful. So I'll just start carving in around my eye cavity as well as just kind of using my move brush to pull out and maybe a pinch brush to shape up along the jawline. And then we can kind of pull this shape up. So I'm looking at all these different hits and breaks here. We got one flown from the chin to the back of the jaw and then up into the head. So we'll start to work on that here next. Probably getting a little bit long in the face, but that's all right. I just want to keep this as kind of low resolution as possible. I like to keep things relatively simple, but sometimes I like to add in some subdivs and smooth things out. I like to keep things really clean if I can, but at least in the beginning stages, it's more important that you just get all the parts and pieces in there more so than anything else. So that chin kind of comes to a little bit of a point. And the reason I can tell that is because it's, you know, a pretty small dainty little chin, but also we have this dip in here, which is telling me that this probably isn't quite as rounded as I have it. So as we look at that three quarter view, you know, we're quite a bit straighter now coming up from that point. If we're looking at this side here, now we want to start to get that to dip in going the other way. I'm going to have to bring these eyes down quite a bit. Typically for these anima, anima, anime style heads, uh, the uh, face is, is pretty small in comparison to the head, sub the eyes. The eyes are typically you know, obviously huge here. So we'll have to play around with that shape as we continue forward. Emphasis being on simplicity here. So let's continue that. Make sure we didn't miss anything else here. Which studio are you on on daily basis? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Or is it top secret? <laughs> no, no, no secrets here. I, I think maybe you mean like, where do I work? What studio do I work at? I, uh, I do, I'm a full-time freelancer. Uh, Float FM, welcome. Thank you for the breakdown. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, how did you get those brushes to show on the bottom? I just customized my user interface and drag them and bloop them down there. I'm sure you can find a quick tutorial on YouTube for it. Nice Pharaoh says, I missed so much. Well, I don't think so, uh, because most of what I've talked about thus far, there's a video over on my YouTube channel that I posted a couple days ago called Understanding Form. It's three minutes long. If you want to catch up really quick, you could probably go watch that and come back. Um, and the VOD for this will be posted on YouTube later on. So no worries, you won't miss a single thing. But yeah, let's continue to shape this up. Make sure I didn't miss anything else. Night Sparrow has no audio. That is not good. Hopefully the rest of you can hear Rethon. You can hear me. Awesome, awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Glad you guys can hear me. All right, so let's continue to shape this head up a little bit. Really, again, focusing on those hits. So what's next here? We got this internal shape that's kind of creating this volume, this convexity around the cheek that flows up and around the eye, creating that concavity for the cavity of the eye. 
So what I'll use is a pinch brush. You can maybe use lazy mouse with your pinch brush as well. It's really up to you. I like to just use uh, a lazy radius of 100. You can find this under the stroke menu under lazy mouse if you wanna play around with that. It's a pretty fun little tool. We'll just use the move brush, I think, for now and continue to adjust some stuff, maybe like trim a little bit here to start planning things out. And let's just kind of get an idea for, for what we're, kind of where we stand right now. So we're wrapping around the eye cavity. I could probably come back a little bit further. And I'm probably not going to create eyes or uh, super detailed lips or nose. I, I really want the emphasis on this demonstration to be on the, uh, how, jeez, <laughs> how simple the, the form is here. Uh, I, I am at this point probably going to dynamesh these two spheres together that I've started to warp. But before I do that, let's take another quick look at our silhouette. So we're coming down around here, around the brow. It looks like we can dip in a little bit more, get a little bit more deep there. Feel a little bit closer around the cheek, and then a dip in around the chin. So we're getting closer, we're getting closer, that's for sure. Let's see, how are we feeling now? We're getting there. I think we need some more volume here as we come up and around our cheek. I'm just using my clay tubes brush to sketch that in very quickly. And we might be a little bit long in the protrusion of the face. So what I'm going to do, use a quick mask lasso, and let's just shrink that back a little bit. Maybe a big old move brush to pull that in as well. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Let's kind of move this edge up a little bit more. Pull back on the eyes and probably mess with the depth for the bridge of our nose here a little bit. Typically when I'm blocking stuff out, I like to keep my edges uh, on whatever I'm blocking out relatively hard. I think it helps me just kind of see form and understand what I'm creating. And then it's really not that hard to go back later on and you know soften a transition. But just keeping that hard plane change I think can be pretty nice and pretty helpful. I think we're getting closer, but now let's take the time to merge the shelf of our face and the back of our head together. So what I'm going to do is use the mer um, yeah, merge down, merge down function. So we'll go into merge, we'll just merge down the shelf of our face and our sphere. So those are now combined and beautiful. And we'll just run another Dynamesh. I think I'll increase the resolution up to 120 or so. And we'll just blend between these, which should be really easy at this stage. Everything should be super low res, super easy to work with. Uh, another thing we can do at this stage, if you're having trouble figuring out proportions, the more stuff that you get in your scene, the easier it will be to kind of gauge proportions against one another. So I find that putting in something like a neck or a body can be really helpful in that. So what I'll do is just very quickly, um, you know, instead of doing it that way, I'll just click on append and click on cylinder 3D. Okay, so now we have a cylinder and we'll just move this down and scale it into position here for a lovely little neck. And let's just make sure that's going all the way up and in there. Add a little bit of some curve from the front. Whoops, if we look at the shape here. So let's get some of that and as well from the back. Oh, come on up. And typically on this style of characters, the necks are very thin. I think for now, we'll just kind of leave this as simplistic as we can though. And yeah, I think we can go ahead and merge that together as well. I don't think there'll be any reason not to. So we'll just Dynamesh those together. Same process as before, merge down and Dynamesh. And then just a quick minute here to blend between these shapes. 
I was just adding some form there to the front to kind of get that feeling a little bit closer to that shape transition that I'm seeing there. And then I'll use a trim dynamic brush. I'm holding the Alt key to start blending between these shapes. And remember, this is all still just dynamashed, really low res. It's now time to start just making sure all these shapes are feeling nice and good together. Make sure that that's working back there. We're gonna do a quick Z remesh here in just a moment to really get this working together a little bit better. Let's also widen out some areas here around the face where that's starting to dip in a little bit too much. All right, and now we are gonna run a Z remesh. So that's just down in tool geometry Z remesh, and we'll set the target poly count to one or 1,000 polys. I'll give that a moment to run while we check out chat. Uh, Slay friend, welcome. First time tuning in. Really like the way you build shapes. Very interesting. Well, thank you, Slay, and welcome to the stream. All right, so that is all done. Uh, Robin says, hey, are you creating these 3D models for game development? First time tuning in. Uh, this particular model is not. This is just for a demonstration as we talk about hits and breaks and how to um, translate form from 2D to 3D and some of the things that I like to look for while doing that. Uh, after we're done with this demonstration, we'll be going back to our shark pup. We can maybe put him up in the corner. We'll, we'll get to him in a little bit. Um, in terms of what we are going to be doing on him, probably just um, maybe like a little bit of cleanup on the actual body in some certain areas, and then uh, working on some of the environment for him. I had a cool idea for sand and how to create a sand texture using noise. I'm not sure if it's going to work though. We'll, we'll play around with it here in a little bit. Um, I'm using Dynamesh and Subdivisions, yes. Uh, you're not quite into Project Primitive just yet. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Or Project Primitive. I, I would assume you mean Project, though. So, real quick, we'll, we'll end here, just so I can catch up on chat, so I don't miss anything. For improving at a fast pace, what kind of practice would you recommend? Sculpt as much as you can. Want to be a character and creature artist? Better small project or doing the whole process? Um, my recommendation would be quantity over quality. However you want to handle that is, I think, up to you, though. Night Sparrow, you got audio. Beautiful. Well, glad you got that worked out. All right, so we just spent some time Z remeshing this. So we took our dynameshed geometry and remeshed this to a more simplistic shape. And now we can add subdivision levels if we want. Really at this stage, it's important that you're stepping up and down through your subdivisions if you want to have subdivision levels. Uh, it's very easy to, um, to kind of let that get out of hand very quickly. So I'm going to go through here and start planing out. Now that we've dynameshed all these shapes together, Proportions will be even more important and a little bit easier to understand. And simplicity is the key. Anime heads always end up looking like aliens in the beginning, which is my favorite part. All sculpts end up looking like aliens in the beginning. It's just part of the uh, part of the magic. <laughs> but staying in this stage for as long as you can is extremely important. And um, yeah, I think staying in this kind of area, the longer you can, uh, the better the end result will be. I would say that no amount of icing will save a bad bake. So essentially, no amount of details on top of uh, some bad primary forms or even secondary are really going to make much of a difference. Still gonna look bad. So we want to take a lot of time to build this up. And we got this pretty simplistic neck, but that's okay. 
most of our focus, I think, is going to be here on the face. So we are, I think, a little bit too wide here for the bridge of the nose. Just looking at how close these lines kind of come together. And as we wrap around here, I'm looking at this line here on the left. Come into this crease. Are we getting a little bit too deep over here? You know what I would like to do? I would like to just soften this plane change a little bit. I think that'll help see what's going on there. Just ever so gently. All right. Then wrapping around the cheek, I think we could use some more volume, just a little bit lower in the cheek. And then from what I can tell, getting a little messy. Don't worry about mess at this stage. Sometimes I get caught up in it. But what we're going to do is just carve in. I'm using my Met Cut brush. It's essentially like a damn standard pinch brush combination. I think the pinch brush would work pretty well for this as well. I'm very quickly going to just force this plane change here that I'm seeing, that convexity, or I'm sorry, concavity, this first arrow. I'm just looking at my silhouette. And then I'm just going to bring this form down a little bit and start inflating that using my clay tubes brush. And let's just soften that a little bit. How are we doing? So from here, I'm going to take this chin. I really think most of the silhouette here for that last little hit is actually from the form that's going to be created underneath the lips. If you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, bam. Um, here you go. That's not very good, actually. That's a very strong shape there. Uh, here, lip. You know what? We'll, we'll use this as a reference, even though it's not awesome. So this, uh, this hard line, essentially all the shapes of the face, mouth, lips, eyes, ears, etc., all create uh, additional form as they blend into the other parts of the face. So specifically, the lower lip has a shape that it creates with the chin, which is what we're seeing there as that kind of runs out and changes direction. So I will probably not be able to get a ton of that form in right now, but the more I can, the, the happier I will be at this stage for sure. So we'll try to get that as close as we can. I think that's feeling a bit better. If anything, we could probably, you know, pull out on those cheeks a little bit more and just make sure that we're not getting too boxy up here. All right. And very quickly, let's make sure the angle of our jaw is going the correct direction. So as we're wrapping around, this isn't just a perfectly straight line. There's actually some curve to it from what I can see. We'll do that, get a little bit of that in there and then wrap up and around here into the head. We see how we're getting like a bubble out there. It's not what we want. Always remember that as you start to build up secondary forms on top of your primary forms, you don't want that primary form to fall flat or essentially get ruined like what's happening right now. It's very important that we nip that stuff now in the early stages. All right, and now I think with just a little bit of fading around that area, we can start to blend this pretty well. Um. Nice doggy shock. Well, thank you, big brush, and welcome. Welcome back. Um, why did you not continue sculpting with Dynamesh? So I swap back and forth between Dynamesh and Z-Remesher all the time. It's actually probably one of 
the things that I get asked about the, the most. And you will figure out when you need to swap between the two. You'll, you'll figure it out for your own workflow. Just sculpt a lot. Really, really the answer to that question in short is mileage and just getting that mileage up. You'll figure it out as you keep going. But right now I have subdivision levels. Um, the geometry is not really helping me down here in the neck. It's kind of getting really messy. So maybe I'll run a quick Dynamesh. If I need to get those subdivision levels back, that's a really quick process. If you guys uh, want to learn more about this process and how you can uh, swap between Dynamesh and Z-Remesh and reproject information with subdivision levels. I have a video on my YouTube channel that talks about that process that I just released a few days ago. I'll share it here in chat for you guys. And folly got shush, shush me, shush past me. I'll share it right here for you guys. Um, oh, that's weird. It gave a timestamp in that, but yes. Um, check it out, and I think that'll help you. A lot. I also talk about some of the, um, what would you call it, common problems that occur with projection. So I think uh, I think that'll be good. But yes, this is Dynamesh now. Oh no, it's ruined, right? No, it's not. We can get the subdivision levels back very, very easily. I'll just take some time to clean up some of this form though. We're getting a little crazy. I think we got most of the primary shapes in there for what we're looking for, for the shape of our head. Most of what I would do now, it would just be starting to um, move up from this level to start sculpting the nose, the eyes, the lips, the ears. And after I got everything in, then I would do another proportional correction. I think it's bad to, you know, once you get to a point where you're comfortable with your proportions enough to move forward, I say go ahead and do it. Because once you get all the parts and pieces in there, things really start to come together a lot easier. And it's so much better um, once you're in that stage to figure out proportions than it is in this stage. But for the block out, you do want to spend your time here. That's not to say like rush ahead as quick as you can. You want to stay in this uh, stage for as long as you can until you're really comfortable with that primary form so that you can move forward from there and progress on your sculpt. But yeah, I think that's pretty much all I'll do for, for this. There's obviously some corrections that we can make. I think the eyes need to go a bit lower and just because of the perspective of this, I think there's some kind of wonkiness going on and we can maybe change some more stuff, but I'll give uh, a little bit of time here. We can answer some questions and maybe spend a little bit more time if, uh, in specific areas if, if we have questions about that. But yeah, I think um, here. We'll do a quick reprojection and answer some, some cues. Oops, don't do that, please. All right. Uh, I don't know a lot about ZBrush. I usually see people abusing Dynamesh and Z-Remeshing at the end for details. Well, you are in the right place, my dude. Here on the PixLogic channel, the ton of awesome streamers that hang out and answer questions all day long. I actually um, did that backwards. Yeah, let me do this one more time because I want to have the undos for this. Sorry about that. One quick more zero mesh and projection. I actually I accidentally did it on the model that I duplicated, so I had all my undos missing. We'll take a look at this in just a sec. Bearwolf fish, what's going on, man? How you doing? Um, that's very helpful. Thanks a lot. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. All right. Subdivide, project, subdivide, project. Beautiful, beautiful. So now we're at a stage where we have subdivision levels that we can step up and down. And essentially the benefit of this for those that are really new to ZBrush is that I can sculpt you know, high resolution details on this if I need to, um, or I just have a smoother surface that I can work on. But I also have a subdivision level where I can step down and make really big form changes. Whereas at a higher level of geometry, if I try to do that, look how it warps my surface. It creates a, a really, really um, bad large move. So it's not very helpful in that regard. So now I can make 
you know, a really big form change, like if I want to slide the eyes down, I can do that at a lower resolution a lot more easily than I could at a higher resolution. And let's see, how are we doing on correcting this shape? I think we're pretty close. Like I said, I would probably spend more time on this once I got the eyes and everything else in here. Let's see. But in terms of most basic primitive shape, if we look at this from the silhouette, I think we're looking pretty good. Cool, cool, cool. Well, as long as we don't have any more questions, we can move on to the next thing. Let's see. Take a look at one more look at this from the profile. Maybe from the top view, that's actually not too bad. Try softening that form change a little bit. All right, cool, cool, cool. Kira, what's going on? Teach me Sensei. I don't know who Sensei is. Maybe Sensei. It's an E. Come on, get your get your full weeb on. You gotta you gotta know how to spell Sensei. <laughs> A true weeb. A true weeb would know. All right. I think that's looking pretty good. Like I said, uh, in terms of the hard edges, again, I'll mention. You know, I like to plane out stuff really tight. Obviously. But then after this, we could probably come back through and start softening some of these sharper transitions around stuff like the jaw, if that's feeling really hard and awkward. But just taking the time to really focus on the silhouette of what you're creating. Think about the hits and breaks of your shape. I think all that's really important. And hopefully that demonstration was uh, helpful for you guys. But yeah, from here, I think we'll continue on with our Puppy Doge, which is um, a concept by an artist by the name of Lily BZ, if you want to check out more of her work. Uh, the, the 2D concept up here that we just used for this demonstration, for those that are just joining us and missed it, is by Park Jinsuki. And check out his art station. Uh, I believe I still have it pulled up, yes. There is this spelling for you guys, Park Jinsuki and then Lily BZ over on her DeviantArt. Awesome, very, very cool. Let's grab our puppy dog now. And we can clear our canvas and get rid of you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jinsuki. So that was pretty quick, I figured we'd have, we'd go through that pretty quick. It's about a half hour or so. Uh, studying some anatomy uh, in detail for now. Very cool, sounds like fun. Love me some anatomy studies. Uh, let's see, so from here, I think what we'll be doing on this guy I would like to do some of the environmental pieces around him and maybe show you guys uh, some some cheats for, for texturing stuff as well. Um, but yeah, so I have just a basic sand texture underneath this dude. And let's see, I think we'll just append a plain 3D. And we will line this up underneath him and then scale it up a little bit. Geometry size, we'll just crank that up real big. And let's move that over. I think that's probably fine. Let's turn on 
double. Just make sure we can see the backside polys there. Uh, there, you know, there's a few things that are sticking out to me here on this guy. There, there's a lot that I would like to correct. We really just we spent one stream posing this guy up, and honestly, it's going to take a bit more than that. He's getting there. He's starting to look a lot closer to the concept that he than he was uh, previously when he was in his neutral pose. Yeah, he's getting there. Starting to be become cuter and cuter with each pass. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and project some of this information for the uh, sand. Before I do that, though, you know what? Let, let's try the uh, projection first. So I'm going to come down here into geometry, and I'm going to turn off the uh, smooth mod and just divide this up. Let's try one million polys. Looks pretty dense to me. I think that'll do for now. I'm going to go down into my texture menu and click, whoop, come back, texture import. And let's grab, oh, I don't have, that's fine. I don't have the original image without it being cropped. So what I'll do here, let's see, let's turn our opacity down. And look at that, our pose isn't quite right. We're not not wriggly enough. And I think the proportion of our head. I said this last time I streamed that the head is too small, and I think uh, I think for sure now I can see that lining this up. So I'm gonna turn down the opacity on this, and grab my standard brush with MRGB, and let's see, I want to just use the spotlight tool as it was intended. Here, I'll turn down the opacity so you guys can see what's going on underneath. I'm essentially projecting that image onto that plane. You can do this with not just a plane, you can do this with anything. But I'm doing it on a plane because I would like to make some sand. You could also use this as a reference image if you wanted to for your for your character, or, you know, really, whatever you're working on. I really wanted to get uh, mainly just the sand. So what I'm now going to do, so this is just kind of the, the step one of this. Project some of this, and now what I'm gonna be doing is using the C key to essentially sample some of these colors. Standard brush, color spray, alpha 07. So what this will do, let me turn spotlight projection off. It's essentially just like a little airbrush now with my standard brush. Pretty cool. We'll turn, uh, turn down RGB intensity a little bit, I think. There we go. And let's just start kind of blocking out some of this a little bit around here. And let's turn up. You know, for the first kind of pass here, we'll just do kind of a, a harsher level. Keep that nice and strong. We got a cute little starfish on there that we can maybe model. And let's see, maybe we can get a little bit more of this. I'm gonna try painting out these bubbles. And essentially, we're gonna be painting out the, uh, the doggo as well. I'm just using the C key to quickly sample some of these different values and shades and go through painting on this. So we're getting a pretty similar texture here to what was used in the painting. And I just want to go through and blend some of this out. And you know, I can we can probably spend quite a bit of time doing something like this. And we don't have to do all of this, but the next step that I want to try doing is creating some noise on this plane to see if we can start getting a little bit of a sandy texture, which we can do next. Let's turn on perspective so we can see this from an angle. Come down here under surface and turn on noise. And here we have our plane that we can work on. Am I going to render in ZBrush? Um, sometimes. Uh, for this little doggy, I will, I will probably not render in ZBrush. I'll probably render in Keyshot or Blender, one of those two. 
Uh, but let's zoom in here. So we want to create this sand texture. And I think with the standard noise material, I think we should be able to get a pretty good sand texture because that's pretty much what the most basic noise is. And we can like zoom in on this a little bit. Let's see, we can increase the scale to make it larger or decrease it to make it smaller. I actually want that to be a little bit smaller. Let's say 0.2, that looks pretty sandy to me. And for the strength, I think I'm gonna make the strength a little bit higher than probably what it needs to be. Ooh. Looks like it barely applied at all. So let's crank that strength up here. Let's go back in with edit and just crank that strength. Crank that strength. Let's try something like that. Whenever you apply noise to a mesh, it typically comes through a lot, uh, a lot more weak than what it appears. Uh, so that's actually pretty close to what I was looking for. My fear is that we might be getting some holes in the geometry. Not holes, but places where, see these like little black dots? Let's go back. Turn off that color blend as well. Do about right there. You know what? We'll just leave that. I think that's actually pretty close to what we want here. So this will actually give our paint kind of that, or I'm sorry, our paint, our uh, sand a little bit more uh, physical volume here so that we're actually getting, you know, not just the poly paint that I'm applying to this that's creating a little bit more variation, but we're also getting some variation from the actual geometry. And then on top of that, the paintbrush that I'm using, the paint combo, actually with the color spray starts to get a little bit more variation in the color. I'm not sure how well you guys can see this on the stream, but there's some reds and greens and blues and yellows in there as well. So you can get some pretty cool effects with that, but we'll just kind of continue here. I think, um, I think some of that darker sand is from the shadow from where he's lying on the bed of the sea. So I think I'll just paint out really most of this with this base color. I think we're getting a lot of good stuff from that form. So we got that going on. In terms of the blue, it's kind of just the light shining through on the water creating that effect. So maybe we can recreate a little bit of that. Let's see. Let's fill in here very quickly. Let me apply that material. And let's just fill in some of this white out here. Make sure we get all this covered. We don't have any white space. I'm using a little bit of a larger brush to do that. That's okay. And we'll just fill all that in. Beautiful, all right. And then for the kind of streaks here, we can maybe match a little bit of what we're seeing. I recommend when you start painting variation in your form, whether you're using this kind of color spray or not, I recommend that you use a low RGB intensity. Painting with RGB values tends to be very strong and overpowered by default. So turning that down a little bit, I find uh, can be very helpful. So let's see, we got, what do I wanna do here for the streaks? I was thinking just kind of maybe like, eh, I don't think lazy mouse is gonna be a good idea. I think we'll just kind of do some quick, larger streaks here. Just like with sculpting, you wanna block out your form for your paint. I'll just do the same thing here. And then what I wanna do is use some of that blue and start to taper in that line a little bit. So it starts to get 
a little bit sharper. We start to get kind of these, a little bit of this ray effect. I think we should continue these a little bit further out. Let's see here. Do these a little bit larger and stronger. A little messy here. All right, now we'll grab that blue, shrink our brush down, start to maybe like taper some of these rays. So it feels like they're not so blocky, not so sharp, or a little bit more sharp, I should say. And we can maybe pull some of this blue into here in certain areas as well, and just start working on this effect slowly but surely. So like I said, just like sculpting, start by blocking out the big shape and start to get some variation in there. And then you can maybe sample a few additional colors in here. I think, like I said, a lot of what we'll get in terms of some of this stuff around here is gonna be from the shadow of the actual character like this. But in terms of the kind of like wavy texture that we're getting in there, let's just grab that darker color and kind of like get a few patches in here where I'm seeing some of this. This might be a little bit dark and overpowered. That's all right. Let's get a little bit more variation in here. Try to do this quick for just blocking this out. And we'll get more of this sharpness in here. Let's do a quick little BPR with this front light on. And you know what, I could move that light to be a little bit more direct since that's what we're gonna see naturally. I just wanna see what the shadows are looking like on that plane. So by default, the shadows in ZBrush are super harsh. If you guys wanna play with these, very quickly, go into your render settings under BPR shadow. This is what I recommend doing. Decrease your rays down to about, or G strength down to about, uh, you know, a quarter or 0.15 or so. You probably wanna up your rays for your final render. For this, it's probably fine since it's just a quick preview. So we'll just leave that on the default of 12. And we'll do that BPR one more time. And give that a second to calculate. The main thing that you wanna change there is your angle, so you're not getting super harsh shadows there. So now we're starting to get some nicer, softer shadows directly behind him, so that's starting to work a little bit better. I think we need to get some more variation in the color here for the uh, sand. From that direct view, we're getting a little bit of that, um, can't remember what the effect is called. You see the vertical and horizontal lines here happening because of the noise. So it might be a good idea to come through with a very low RGB or low uh, intensity smooth brush and soften some of that sand texture out. When I say we move on, because I don't want to spend too much time on this, I think you guys get the basic idea for how we wanna go about blocking out. Mainly I wanted to show you guys how to project the paint and then how to start using the color spray paintbrush to get some nice variation in color and texture very quickly. What I would do uh, for this moving forward, what I would like to do, obviously get some of these uh, starfish and bubbles, I think we'll do that next, but in terms of the actual like paint here, I'd probably grab Let's see, I probably wouldn't use color spray for some of this and just like freehand some of these like little smaller dots or use an alpha with a drag rectangle. If we would like, probably wouldn't use that alpha that we just previously used. And that's probably a bit too large for something like this. So I think it might be easier to freehand some of that, but I'm sure there are a ton of awesome alphas that we could use with drag rectangle to start getting a really cool effect there. Let's lower that a little bit more. And then maybe just kind of like very quickly, you know, freehand 
some of this additional kind of texture in the sand and play around with that where we're seeing some of this additional information, some darker than others. All right, but let's talk about form, form more. I'm gonna hide that because it's a little distracting. We'll fix our light as well. Let's do a quick starfish. And then I also wanna show you guys some stuff with rendering transparency in ZBrush for the bubbles. Um, but yeah, let's, let's starfish it up. Make sure we don't have any more cues before we move on now. Uh, looks like it has easel texture for the sand. That's why I was saying I think it would be a good idea to go back through and smooth out the uh, form where it's feeling like it's getting that repetitiveness to it, for sure. Uh, I think you mean canvas, right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I said that I meant canvas. But you can let me know. I might have said document. This here, the thing that we're looking at, this is called your your document, your ZBrush document. Fix that real quick. I don't know. What did I say? Let's starfish it up. It's gonna be me later after I pass out. Starfish on my bed. Let's start with hmm. What do you guys think for a starfish? Start with a cube. Might be the easiest way. I could just start with a sphere, either or. Works for me. So what I've done here is I've gone down into the initialize palette, excuse me, and turned on Q cube or quick cube with a one by one by one. We'll do just that straight up. So after you have that, all we have to do is create one quick leg for our starfish, which we can just taper in just like this. Super quick, super easy. And I'm just moving vertices around, nothing crazy. Oh, what do we got there? That is fine. We had our verts flipping in on themselves. That is not what we want. All right, and now let's use our Z Modeler brush if you're familiar with it. We're gonna crease up some edges. Crease, just a single edge. Click on those. And we might actually run some bevels through this instead of creasing. Creasing can be a little bit hard and destructive I think we'll we'll try to make it work with creases, and then if we really want to, we can go back through and add some bevels later. I think there will be a cooler quick trick that we can do, though, with um, subdivisions. I'll show you guys something cool. Ah, uh, looked like it had the texture of a canvas. I gotcha, I gotcha. I'm picking up what you're putting down. All right, starfish it. So we have a five pointed star. So what do we want to do here? I guess 360 or no, 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 sorry. 90 divided by five because we're gonna be using our transpose line, if you're familiar with this. We're gonna be centering this line to about right here. Let's move this down a little bit. I'll show you guys a little trick here where you can get exact uh, degree rotations with your transpose line. It's pretty cool. Um, hmm. All right, so preferences, transpose, not units, but just transpose. Uh, and then we're gonna look at this number here, this rotation steps. Uh, so essentially you wanna take this number, whatever number this is, 
and you wanna adjust it to create the number of rotations you get when holding the shift key and rotating here. So right now it is set to four, which means that this object will rotate one, two, three, four times for every 90 degrees, right? Uh, but if you look at the settings here, the if you hold control over anything in ZBrush, it'll give you some more information. It says that if you, it's, it essentially says that it's 360 divided by the number that you put in here, which is why I started to do 360 by five, but it's actually 90 by five. So that's just for confusion's sake, you might wanna keep that in mind. So I think I need to set this to, is it 18 or no, 18 would be too many. What do I need here? I don't think I can do, ah, uh, maybe not. So I think the most that I can actually get out of this would be like that. Hmm, 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 Let's see, so we would want, maybe it would be 360 by five, but that would be a lot. That'd be way too many steps per point. Trying to think of a way where we could do this very quickly with the transpose unit trick that I have here. Might not be able to do it with this. There are other ways that we can get uh, more accurate uh, rotational degrees here. Hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. What do you guys think? I'm trying to think of another way we could do it. I know I've done five pointed stars before. I'm trying to think how I did it in the past. It's been a while since I've starfished. Let's see. So 360, whoops, that was... Did I hit multiply? Bam, 72 degrees. So every 72 degrees, I mean, we could literally just like gimmick it and rotate it essentially where we want. But that's no fun, I don't wanna do that. Hmm. I mean, this is like super easy to like gimmick, right? I wanted to do an exact 72 degrees. But because I can't do rotational step decimal places, I don't think that's gonna be possible using the transpose line which is unfortunate. I'm trying to think for 72. Hmm. Mm hmm. Well, for now, I think we'll just kind of gimmick it, like I said, because this is super easy to uh, just duplicate and mirror across to the other side. It literally takes two seconds. Whoops, what do we got going on there? Mirror, please, thank you. So that's super easy to do for a quick little starfish kind of block out shape. But at least in ZBrush, I'll have to think about it. I'll come back to you guys. Uh, an insert brush. Could you do something with rotational symmetry? Hmm, that's not a bad idea. So what you can do, what, uh, was it Chris? I believe said was maybe something with rotational symmetry. So instead of doing it this way, here's what we'll do. If we want to get exact, uh, we will append a sphere and turn on up here in transform, activate symmetry Turn on Y symmetry, and we will set uh, radial count to five. So we have radial Y symmetry turned on. So now we can sculpt on this, and it will repeat that around the shape. So then what we'll do is grab our geometry. I'll just kind of look at it here directly, and create an insert mesh brush. So we'll do that. Just click on New. Go back to our sphere, and just like that, we can insert those directly on there. I'll hold the shift key, so 
So it snaps, and voila, we have the beginnings of a starfish. And if we would like uh, to have these be connected up in the middle, the way I had it kind of going before, we can go to our brush depth and set the embed value a lot lower. And I'll just do this one more time. Whoops, swapped our brush, insert mesh. Ooh, there we go. Not, it's not wanting to cooperate, but we can just kind of move that in manually if we want to. I think what I'll do is mess with the geo here. So I know there's a way that I can do exactly 72 degrees because I've done it before. Just off the top of my head, I cannot think of it. So we'll have to come back to that. Maybe in the next stream, I'll come back with a solution or I'll make a video of it over on my channel. Uh, at least this way we can actually keep the radial Y symmetry on while we work on our starfish and sculpt on this on all these different parts at the same time. So if I move in one area, it's going to move and adjust it in another. But let's make sure that this is manipulating correctly. Let's see, let me add in some quick subdivs. Make sure that this is all even here, aligned with the actual brush. Looks like it is. Ah, I think something's going on here. Thought my normals were flipped or something. My move brush being a little bit weird. You guys will have to give me a sec here. Figure out why. Why oh why is our move brush being weird? That is very strange. You guys see that? So I'm grabbing the geometry over here. I don't have back face masking on, which is what I thought the issue was. That's very, very odd not getting what we want there. So I think I broke my move brush, which is fun. <laughs> uh, I think I'll have to, ooh, that is so weird. I don't think I've ever experienced this one before. Well, that's fun and new. We'll do a quick save, a quick, quick save, and restart ZBrush. And I'm sure that brush will be just fine when we boot back up. But yes, in terms of those degrees, getting that exact 72 degrees of rotation to have five evenly rotated segments. We did get that with the radial symmetry. That's a little bit gimmicky though. I would like to um, like to figure out how we can do that exactly. Let me make sure that my move brush is working now. This is what should be happening. That's what we expect to happen. Let's go back to our quick save here. Recovered, recovered, no, 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 no. This one right here. Open that back up. See if we can get this sorted out. There we go. Back to working order. That's what we like to see. <laughs> I have no idea what was going on there. It was just a weird little bug. Look at that, perfectly fine, working exactly the way it should now. Well, that's kind of fun. A little dancing starfish. Let's re-import our doggo. Load up the uh, spotlight, got one saved for him. Very, very strange. Never had that one happen to me before, especially while live streaming. God bless symmetry, that's right. Symmetry is pretty sweet. Yeah, the back face masking was not on. No idea what was happening there. Just didn't want to, um, didn't want to work at all. All right, so let's get back to our starfish. Obviously, uh, the shape that we have created is too thin. So we can either take some time to thicken this up and like recreate the pieces, I think that sounds like a lot of wasted time, so I think we could probably just use a deformation inflate 
and get this guy a little bit closer to a chunky star. I'll just keep inflating. I think that looks pretty good. And let's go a little bit more, a little bit more narrow for the tips of our starfish. So again, we can just manipulate all these at once. It's super nice to be able to do this. Obviously we have a big old hole in the middle of our starfish. We'll fix that later. He's not going anywhere. I'm gonna continue to inflate this though. I think it's gonna be the easiest way to fill in some of this area in here. Get these connected out a little bit further. Stretch, more, more, more. And you know what? I think that's pretty close. Okay. And then I'll just do the same thing that I did up here to squeeze that in. All right, beautiful. Albeit uh, a little messy, but that is okay. Messy is just fine. We can work with messy. So we can clean up messy later on. All right, just making sure that that wasn't feeling super, super thick there. Let's move that edge down a little bit closer as well. Feeling pretty good. All right, so we got these subdivision levels in here. Ooh, you know what, let's just recreate some of those. I have most of these edges creased. Ah, I wonder, I wonder if the problem was stemming from the creased edges for some reason. Because now my edges are no longer creased. But instead of creasing them, I'll just add in some subdivision levels. And I'll just delete them, I don't really need them. I mainly just want a little bit more geometry. So I can use move back face masking and close up the middle there. And then just run a very simple Dynamesh on this. This thing's pretty large though. So let me scale you down a little bit to a size that ZBrush likes a little bit better. All right, let's Dynamesh you. Uh, so if you guys are unfamiliar with local symmetry, if you guys are working on something like for instance, my starfish is now no longer on the symmetrical axis, so I can't use radial symmetry to the, uh, the benefit that I would normally like to. This happens often with you know just simple X symmetry as well. If you turn on local symmetry, instead of looking at your uh, world axis for where your object is aligned, it'll instead look at the object and create the symmetrical plane for the object. So the radial symmetry here it's actually being a little janky still, which is unfortunate. Should be doing exact, should be looking exactly the same on every single side there. Looks a little bit thicker down here. It might just be the shadow. Let me move the light. Hmm, it's a little hard to tell. It looks a little bit thicker in here than it does on that one. But with local symmetry, for instance, just so you guys can see this. We'll turn off radial and we'll go to X symmetry here. So we can sculpt on this with X symmetry, just like any other object, which I'm sure you're familiar with. But if we move this off the X axis, now you can see that red dot over here. That's where it's affecting the other half of the geometry. If we turn on local though and start sculpting, you can see that it's looking at the geometry for our symmetry. Again, it's being a little bit weird here with this object. So, you know what? I think we'll just kind of work with this with just maybe X symmetry for a few minutes here, just to clean up some of this super nasty geometry that we're getting here, which is unfortunate. Let's do a mirror and weld to kind of clean this up. And we can even remesh this and I think will be in a good place for getting a little bit closer towards our starfish. 
Uh, I think what I would like to do, ooh, you know, that's a little bit too high of a resolution for me. What I would like to do next is kind of pull up these tight lines. Is that remeshing or not? Let me try that one more time here. A little bit lower. I'd like to pull up these tight lines coming up into the center of the starfish. Try to get those a little bit closer to the middle. What I am attempting to do here is get the resolution low enough that these hard edges start to blend out. It's not really wanting to work though, so I think we'll just go through and smooth some of these manually very quickly. This will take five seconds. And we could probably pinch some of that, but let's just try zero meshing this as low as we can go, 0.1. I think we should get some pretty good results for rounding that edge out. There we go. So now when we smooth this, we have a lot better luck. I'll run, I think, just a pinch brush with Lazy Mouse through here. And I would be continuing to use that radial symmetry but it looked like it was being a little janky. Wasn't wanting to be our friend. Plus our starfish isn't going to be, you know, exactly the same on every single um, leg, tentacle. What do starfish have? Feet, I guess? I don't know exactly what they're called. I'm not a uh, marine biologist by any means. But they're not gonna be exactly the same. We'll break symmetry on this eventually, but I think for now we just want to go through and tighten up some of these lines just a little bit. And let's see here. Get a little bit, whoops, a little bit tighter through here. So that transitions a little bit better. And I'm also going to inflate this guy a little bit. Go back down into deformation, inflate, and crank that up. Hmm, you know what? Instead of that, I might just pull in on some of these legs. Using array mesh rotation, that might be a, uh, a very good way to get that specific number of degrees. I think that would be it. If that is in... Uh, if that is divisible by 360, I can, if you can get like a full degrees of rotation out of that, then yes, I think that would be a good way to go about it. And that might be how I've done that in the past. So in Array Mesh, which is under Tool Array Mesh, you have uh, these little buttons down here, these little toggles, you want to set it to rotation. And obviously, uh, you would probably have to set the pivot point for that to be in the middle. So you'd probably have to mess with the offset a little bit as well. It's a little bit weird with um, with array mesh because it will rotate concentrically around the object. So you might have to play around with that a little bit to get the exact look uh, and feel that you're looking for to get that X, Y, Z amount. I'm, I'm actually not sure that that would work now that I think about that a little bit more. But you might be able to play around with that and get pretty close. But I think in terms of accuracy, I think the insert mesh way that we did this would be a little bit closer. Looks like Patrick. Uh, I could see it. He's got, you know, a little bit of the pink color coloration there. Limbs is a pretty good general term. Yeah, I think so. Here, let's see. Let's see if, um, Local sim is going to be our friend on this one last time. Transform, Y sim, rotate. Doesn't look like it. Does not look like it. And I'm really. Not sure why. I could have sworn local sim worked with radial. But like I said, there are, whoops, there are um, 
some asymmetrical things here that we want to deal with. I don't want that to bleed up there too much. Maybe just a little bit too thick for my liking. Some thick boys. Let's thin them out really quick. Using some quick little transpose masking rotation tricks. You know what, I think that's like pretty close to what we would want. He's probably a little fat. Probably just want to squeeze him down a little bit, thin him out. We could project some poly paint onto this, but most of the time I like to just block out colors by selecting a kind of base color here, filling that in, and then Instead of doing what we did before with the paint spray, I'll just use a quick, quick like little block out here. We won't use any fancy paint spray or anything like that. Let's do this nice and quick. Give me a low RGB intensity, please. And we'll just like paint a little bit of that. Let's start to get our starfish. Looking a little bit closer to our concept. So typically when I block out paint, I try to just do it really quick and get a lot of the big main color changes in there. I do the same thing with faces. I've shown that off on stream here before. If you guys are interested in painting faces, I have a few vids over on my YouTube channel. It's not too different from what I'm doing right here with a starfish. Kind of block out some of the colors and then start getting a little bit more complicated. I'm using the C key, by the way, to sample colors very quickly. It's just a nice quick way so I can sample this light color. You can see how that changes over there. V swaps colors. So oftentimes I see people, people used to ask all the time, they were like working on something and then, oh no, my model's black, what happened? What's going on? You typically just hit the V key on accident and swapped your poly paint color. Got a little confused. No problem, it happens to us all. Just five seconds ago, I was getting confused by my move brush. No idea what the heck was going on there. All right. And then if you want to take some time to neutralize a little bit of the color, what I recommend doing is using a low RGB intensity value and then just clicking on fill object a few times. And it'll tend to kind of bring all those colors a little bit closer together. Essentially what this does is that's a 15% infill for that color. It's a good way to think about it. And maybe I might hit this with a, a little bit of spray. I think that might be a little fun here. We'll do the same thing that we did before. Let's see. Just get a little bit of that texture on there. A little bit more variation in the color, right? Very nice. The bottom of it's all purple, but you know, we can maybe just do a quick Quick little pass down there to lighten some of that up. Just very quickly. Not a big deal, it'll never be seen. But yes, let's see here. Let's turn all of our junk on. We have our quick little ground plane here that we made. That needs some more paint on it, but yes. We have a little starfish here that I think could be a bit fatter and I think we'll mess with the paint a little bit more on him as well. But very nice. I think we could probably just inflate this and get it a bit closer. Maybe. We'll see. 
Instead of using the deformation inflate, I'll actually just use my transpose line. Give that a quick little, whoops, move and bam. Fatten him up a bit. Cool, cool, cool. So we could probably uh, do another pass of paint on him, but I think I'll wait to do that. I'll do that plus the background at the same time. Next, let's line up some very quick bubbles and I'll show you guys how we can do some transparent stuff in ZBrush for materials. Brave, what's going on? Nice haircut. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate the kind words. Let's do a bubble or two. I think it's pretty obvious what we're gonna use for this. Wherever our append button is, there we go. Append and a sphere, beautiful. And let's just move this up into place. Somewhere around here. And we'll scale this down. And what I would like to do Let's just use my move brush and change the shape of this a little bit. I don't want perfectly round bubbles. It feels a little awkward, I think. Uh, but also, I think this is too dense of geometry to do the simple move that we would like. So let's just Z remesh it down really low. This will also help to give it some abnormality so it's not perfectly round, uh, which would be nice. And then I'll just use my move brush and you know, shape it up a little bit. I think that's fine. And then instead of spending the time to duplicate this over and over again, I'll just use my transpose line, hold control, click and drag. And then I'll just kind of reposition a few of these here. And then we obviously don't want these all to look and feel the exact same. So we'll play with scale and moving and rotating these around. And let's see, let's get some of these smaller bubbles as well. There's a little one right here. I'm thinking about this in 3D space, trying to get some height and depth to these. Go a little one down here. Make sure I'm positioning these close to where they need to be. Let's move this down. I'm trying to cluster a little bit with these so they're not super far spread out. It feels actually more awkward when you have, I think, if you're trying to do a pattern of something and you have it a little bit more randomized and just kind of like even. Whereas if you have some clusters of shapes, it feels a little bit more natural and it Gives your eye a little bit of rest between clumps of shapes. And this 2D artist has obviously understands that as well, because so they've done that here. All right. Let's see. Let's just move this down a bit. Let that quick save do its thing. Beautiful. We got some nice quick little bubbles here. We could probably do a couple more, just real fast. Probably a little bit too big, that's okay. All right, sure, we'll say that's good for, for bubble time. Let's move that around. Now let's talk about materials and how we could go about rendering some of the Symmetry here. Not sure why that. Or rendering some of the transparency here. Uh, I'm not sure why that remesh freaked out though. Let's try that one more time. Looked like it was having a rough go of those bubbles. Just trying to fix some of those awkward transitional areas. I think that looks pretty good for our really simple bubbles. So playing around with materials, there are a number of things that we could play with to start getting 
a glass effect. But I think the first thing we want to do is just grab a material. I'm going to use, I think, the just basic toy plastic material and fill this in. And just fill that in with a uh, solid material, solid white color. And then we're going to come down all the way under Tool to Display Properties and then go into BPR Settings. And we are going to turn on BPR Transparent Shading. Uh, and yes, we would like to turn that on in the render palette as well. And then we're going to mess with this BPR visibility slider here. And I'll just crank that down to about 50% and do a BPR render so you can see what that starts to look like. So you can already see we're starting to get a little bit of a transparency effect. Uh, and I will put some geometry behind that so we can very quickly make sure that we're getting that transparent effect. So I've seen a lot of questions about rendering transparency in ZBrush and how you go about doing that right down here under display properties bpr settings bpr transparent shading and then you just have to crank and adjust this one here bpr visibility uh, i think instead of using a white infill let's try black i think this might be a little bit closer to what we're looking for based on what i'm seeing there and so we're starting to get like this white outline around the bubbles, but it feels like it's got this more kind of shaded look in the uh, in the center there. So let's adjust. Let's maybe pull this down really low, like fifteen percent. That might be getting too transparent. Let's take a look. Let's get like a quick see-through effect here. Another thing that we can do, I think that looks too transparent. Another uh, another thing that we can do to uh, aid us in this effect is also mess with our material settings. So let's open up material, just dock this over here and open up our modifiers. Let's check out a few different settings here. So I'm gonna turn ambient way down and let's see, diffuse, we'll turn that back up. Right about, we'll try about there. And then specular, for the specular curve, let's open up this. And see if we can adjust that just a little bit. So I'm just adjusting the curve a tad to see if we can get a little bit of a better effect here. And what did we have that at before? It was like around 50% or so, 45, 50%. Let's see what this is starting to look like. So unfortunately we have to do a quick BPR render every time we want to do this. That's why I've been hiding the other geometry. This is actually starting to look uh, a lot closer than the, uh, the previous bubbles that we were getting. So that's starting to feel a bit better. Another thing that we could do that might be lucrative is instead of relying on the specularity of the material, whoops, we could just crank that all the way down to zero. So say goodbye specular, and instead of doing that, it might be fun to play around with manually painting, whoops, let's go back to our freehand brush stroke here, manually painting in some highlights. This could be fun just to get like a quick little interesting effect. We'll see. Let's just see what like one little highlight there looks like if this even goes through. All right, so yeah, you could probably go through and manually paint a few of these. I don't think it would be that hard either. It looks like there's some complex lighting kind of hanging out on these bubbles. Let's try one more. But yeah, we could probably play around with this for a little bit. I think I prefer to just do all the uh, the highlights in the actual specularity of the material, but I think that's um, I think that's pretty cool in terms of you know, what we can get out of here. Let's mess with this specularity. 
Try to get that back to the default there. So that is how you work with, um, with uh, transparency in ZBrush, for those that are curious. I think uh, that the black material works a little bit better. And what I could do is maybe like double up the geometry if I wanted to get that white outline for the bubble and try to create two different color infills with transparency so that it got like this white kind of rim effect. I think that might be one way that we could go about that. But I would like to uh, move on so we don't focus on materials here too long. I mainly just wanted to show off the transparency settings here. I'm not sure why the BPR stopped rendering there. I'm not sure what happened. Can you actually keep the transparency in the viewport? So you cannot keep the uh, BPR transparency under display properties in the viewport to my knowledge. Uh, it is only for each BPR render. So you can't just like pre-visit. Uh, so to my knowledge, no, but somebody else might have uh, a different process that I do not know about. But to my knowledge, I don't believe so. Uh, let's see. Hey, Ben, can I ask what age did you start ZBrushing and how old are you? Absolutely, you can ask. But uh, I think not to, not to diss your question, but... Uh, I think often the question of years is a really bad question. And I've talked about this uh, many times on stream before. Um, so for those that are new here, uh, I, I typically think measuring a skill in terms of how many years you've been doing it means nothing. And I think that's pretty obvious to people as well, right? I've been uh, digitally sculpting in ZBrush for five years for five years and that doesn't mean anything. I mean, that means I could use it once a month, right? For five years. Uh, or that means I could use it every day for five years, which is a little bit closer to the truth, right? I, I digitally sculpt in ZBrush now every day. When I first started, I didn't do it every day, but pretty quickly uh, in there, I started you know, using it as much as I could. I wish there was a way that I could see how many hours I've put in because that would be a lot, um, a lot closer to that estimate of, you know, how long I've been going to, to where I am now. But yes, yes, about five years. I, I think years, like I said, it's just a really bad measurement of, of time for, for skill. It's like, well, how long, how long have you been, you know, uh, running? It's like, well, you know, five years, but I run, you know, once every month or so. It's like, oh, okay. So you run a little bit. It's like, what would that be? You've, you've ran 60 times. <laughs> it doesn't really mean too much. All right, so what I wanted to do was spend a little bit time to correct some of the posing on our little shark pup here because the pose of our dude up here, the curve is a lot more extreme and the head of the character is a lot larger than what I'm seeing in my my sculpt here. So I'm gonna take this image just so you guys can see what I'm seeing. Turn down the opacity really low. We'll scale that up. And we'll overlay this on top of our shark pup here. Let me put him, that looks good. We'll go to movie, timeline show. We'll just click right there. Bada boom. Let's scale this up. Overlay that a little bit better. Let's see, opacity, let me see. Try to line that up. I'm trying to line this up with my legs a little bit. And you can see how much larger the head is in this concept. Our, our body is actually proportionally pretty close the way I have this lined up. Make sure that's where I have that. And what I've done here with my timeline is essentially so I can move this around and snap back to that position really quick. So what I'm gonna do is hop into Transpose Master. We'll just do that very quick. This is under Z Plugin, Transpose Master, T-Pose Mesh. And we will do some quick rotation and scaling up of the head to get that feeling closer to our, our very good boy here. Let's 
grab our body and whoop. beautiful Let's soften that a little bit and uh, twist twist that up and obviously there's some other stuff here that we want to I think spend some time correcting let's see let's grab our tail And rotate this up. And obviously there are some scale differences here, which are pretty easy for me to just fix with my move brush. Just a few seconds of moving and rotating around. And we're pretty close. And then looking at the silhouette there, the line flowing through here, what I need to happen is I need my body to actually shift over a little bit, starting about right there. Looking at that line of the body, making sure that that is lining up properly. And then this is just, you know, way, way out here. Get a lot more of that twist in there and we'll kind of pull this up and I know it's pushed to the extreme right now but you got to break stuff before you can fix it let's just kind of continue to push that around and then I'll grab this arm and move this up a little bit I'm not gonna mess with the scale of my arms just yet because there is some perspective going on in that image and that hand over there is much larger than the other one in that image. So I think it's probably something that will probably end up scaling both of them. I want to keep, you know, in 2D stuff can get cheated a lot. In 3D, I try to keep it within the realm of reality as best as I can. So for some of this stuff, I'm fine with cheating it, but for stuff like scale or, you know, just some major form changes, a lot of the time, I like to uh, to ground that in reality as best as I can. Let's see. All right, so he's getting he's getting all over there. I think we scale up a few more things here. Oh, that leg is much wider there in the concept than what we got going on. Let's just go through here, do a quick mask, and scale this up. It's getting a little bit closer. I think the position is off for that back leg, but I would like to first scale up our cute little head. Position that. Get our rotation correct, and yeah, that head is just way, way larger than what we got going on here. All right, kind of realign some of this back up. And my body is going to have to get quite a bit more wide up here towards the top. So let me hide this arm, make this a little bit easier on ourselves. Transition that up to the rest of this a little bit better. And I've kept this separated for a while, specifically for this reason, because I knew that I was gonna have to scale this head up once I got into posing a little bit more. And there we go, that line is starting to blend up there a lot nicer now. And turn that arm back on. So this is starting to feel proportionally just a lot closer to me. I'm liking that a lot better. 
And just kind of blend that in a bit more and probably work on this other leg down here for a minute. Uh, how do you set up the same distance for the spotlight reference? Sometimes I mess up moving a little bit of your sculpt. Uh, Adrian, I'm not sure uh, what you mean in terms of setting up the spotlight reference. I've essentially put the image here uh, in just like one, one area. And then after I found a spot where I like where it is, I just kind of toggle that on and off or uh, have that where it is. And then I put my mesh and just kind of align it and then create a point on my timeline, which you can turn on in movie timeline show, the timeline show. And then you can drop a point on your timeline. It's essentially a um, keyframe. And yeah, you can just snap back to that whenever you need to grab that. You can also, you know, do moves and rotates and stuff like that. And then actually tween, like in animation software, between those two. And then if you want to get rid of one of these keyframes, you can click and drag it off the timeline to delete it. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. All right. Uh, Professor Bum, is is, uh, is any of this manually retopoed? No, no, this is uh, all uh, Ziri Mesh, auto topology, uh, just to get something that is sculpturally uh, efficient here, which is what we have currently. Uh, I think the head needs to move up a little bit. We're also getting a little bit of the neck poking through into the mouth which is no bueno. Ooh, just slide that up ever so slightly. And just try to fix some of the rotation here. And this is, like I said, pretty close. And it's feeling quite a bit better now that we have a lot more curve going on for that extreme pose. So this is where we were before, and I'm about to translate all those changes back onto our mesh. But first, before we do that, there's some, oh, you know, it might be easier to do this on the actual body outside. So let's just T-pose back and then I'll fix the leg. So let's go in here under transpose master again, and T-pose our mesh. And then we'll see all those changes Cascade back onto our geometry. No problem, Adrian. Uh, happy that that answered your question there. Hopefully that'll help you a lot more in the future. Uh, Eben says, did you take classes or are you self-taught? I am self-taught uh, and I have taken uh, one class, one class once. All right, this is where it's getting funky, right down here. In terms of classes though, there's so much stuff out there for, you know, how to use software and stuff like that. In terms of learning the software, what I did for people that don't know, for people that are new here, I, I just, when I learned ZBrush, it was before there was like a bunch of people like this on the ZBrush channel doing a ton of free content for people, which is awesome. I love that this exists now and I, I love being a part of it, but it didn't exist really when I started learning ZBrush. So I, I had to do it the old fashioned way. I just bought a couple books and like read through the entire thing, folded down about every two or three pages, every other two or three pages. I had like so many dog ears in them. It's, it's crazy. I actually still have these old books. Uh, but that was just to learn the software. And there really is a ton of stuff that focuses on learning software out there. But there's not really a lot that focuses on the, the mindset of sculpting and working on creating you know, appealing form and shape. So that's really what I try to do in my live streams and over on my YouTube channel. Just because there's so... There's, there's just not a lot of stuff that goes into that. And it's the hardest part. 
for people that are new to ZBrush, and I'm sure there are some people that are new here to ZBrush and digital sculpting, the, um, you know, you go through that first kind of growing pain of learning the software. And sure, that's kind of like a big hump to get over, but once you get over that hump, then you realize, oh my god, there's this mountain in front of me called sculpting now that I have to learn and figure out. And that's, uh, <laughs> excuse me, that's really the, uh, the hard part. So that's really what I try to focus on a little bit more for my stuff. And uh, hopefully, hopefully it's helpful. Um, Wonder Gam, what is going on? Lovely, lovely games you got going on there. Zero Mesher does a decent job. Zero Mesher does a fantastic job, in my opinion, especially if you use it in combination with polygroups. Polygroups and occasionally some Zero Mesher guides can really be, uh, really be pushed pretty far. I'm gonna move this. I no longer need this to line up. Now I just need it as a reference. I can use to fix some of the form here in my body because the main kind of edge here, like where we're talking about hits and breaks, that's where my surface starts to turn. For those that missed our initial demonstration, uh, the uh, video here will be posted over on YouTube. Uh, I'm not sure if there is a link to the Pixelogic ZBrush YouTube channel below. Uh, but I also have a video over on my YouTube channel, which you can just Google Polygon, I'm sure you'll find it, talking about uh, specifically hits and breaks and how we can better translate stuff from 2D to 3D. So that was at the beginning of this stream. Uh, again, if you guys want to check that out over on my YouTube channel, you can find that where the VOD will be posted uh, probably in the next week or so, I think. Kind of depends how much stuff is in the backlog. Let's get through here and adjust where that surface changes directions. I'm just using my move brush. We're getting a little bit late here on time. We'll try to correct as much as we can here, as quickly as we can. Doing some focus on 3D modeling and animation. This stuff has always intrigued me a lot. Awesome. Well, welcome, welcome to the club. All the the cool kids hang out here, doing 3D stuff. Let's see, what do I want to do for this hand? I'll align that a little bit better. Probably end up pulling back on that, but you can see how the shape of my body has now started to warp. It's not looking super appealing anymore. I just need to work on where that surface is turning a little bit better. Make sure that I'm retaining that volume all the way down the length of that object. I'm getting some awkward turns here and there. That's easy enough to fix though. Ooh. Angry Monday. Welcome back, dude. How are you doing? It has been a while. Uh, I'm going through that learning hump now. It's tough in the beginning, but I'm actually having fun with ZBrush. Just gotta get over how my stuff looks like aliens. That's right. Quantity over quality in those early stages, guys. I really do think that'll help you out a lot. Try to sculpt as much as you can and get over those tough little areas. Gonna be making a bunch of poop sandwiches for a while, as we like to say. Whoops, wrong brush there. I want my select lasso. Just trying to blend down here a little bit better. So we can match that silhouette 
a little bit more closely. Starting to get there. I'm wondering if that leg just needs to be wider for this length here. Uh, let's see, you seem to be using the transpose line for the most part. Do you not like the gizmo or do you simply prefer the old way? Uh, I, I grew up with the, yeah, I started using the transpose line when I started using ZBrush. 3D gizmo didn't exist, so I used the transpose line. For those that uh, don't know, there's a ton of hidden awesome features in the transpose line. You can do stuff like inflate, you can do stuff like uh, bend deformers, you can do all sorts of awesome little secret hidden things with the transpose line. And I get asked that question so much that I actually made <laughs> a YouTube video uh, describing all the secret hidden functions that you can do with the screen. A make transpose line. Share, copy, link, bada boom. Fire it off in chat. Go crazy. <laughs> so uh, I think I think there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with the transpose line. Uh, and check it out. Check it out in the video. I think you would be surprised by how many cool little things that you can do in there. Uh, been super busy? No problem, dude. I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Glad to see that you are doing well as well. Well as well. Well as well as well. All right. So I have moved my body now and stretched quite a bit. So our neck folds aren't really, um, well, where the, the neck is. So we need to realign that stuff. I'm going to toggle off my paws. Go away. And realign some of these folds that we blocked out during our last stream. I'll just use my move brush. It really shouldn't be that hard. Get that aligned back up there. And just make sure we rotate around. Looks like we're maintaining our form fairly well here. Kind of liking how that starts to snake back up. Let's see. If anything, I might try to get a little bit more volume around here. And probably I need to realign these folds as well with our other leg, because now that those are moved. I've done a lot of stretching here, but like I said, you gotta break some stuff to fix it. Our pose was nowhere near enough twisted off to the side so now this is feeling I think just a million times uh, closer I'm gonna start to correct some of this garbo down here like this leg for instance is sticking out from the mesh super duper far I say we whoops bring it in a little bit We'll have to do some work to blend this back here, like what we did with the other one. I don't think that'll be too crazy hard. I think the hardest part of blending this side of the body for the limbs will just be the folds that we have here. I'm trying to get all that to feel like really integrated there. Remember that when you're you know, doing anything that's combining geometry like what I did here with the teeth, you can see that I've sculpted up volume around the gums, and this helps to make the teeth just feel, you know, not like they're just stuck on there. Even for the gums, you know, I've created some additional form in here. Although it's quick and really simple, it's still necessary to make sure that your shapes are all flown together well, and not just kind of geometry interpolating each other, which always feels like super, super awkward. <laughs> the deep ocean creature, yes, absolutely. No problem, no problem. A tentative slug. Very nice name. What is the creature? It is a shark pup. Uh, for those that are just joining us, we are very close here to the end of our time today. So I'll go ahead and shout out the uh, artist again. It is Lily BZ. 
She has a deviant art. That's uh, where I found this image. I actually found it on Reddit and then subsequently did a reverse Google image search to find her work. But yes, L-I-L-I-B-Z. There's her name down there. You can go check out some of her work. Um, but yeah, in terms of other corrections here, I think we'll probably hold off here since we're kind of at the end of our time and make sure we answer any last minute questions. How do you do a smoothing mask? Asks Wondergam. Yep, no problem. That's very easy to do. Um, so I am using the mask lasso. Hold the control key. You can click up here to swap your mask brush. I'm not sure why mine's not working. There we go. And uh, I'm using the mask lasso, so you can just click and select that one. So I'll just mask off my tail very quickly. And then what you want to do, I'll lower my um, subdivision level here to the bottom so you can see even better, is come down into your masking palette and click on blur mask. So that blurs that. But there is a hotkey for this by default. It actually doesn't do this operation though. It does something a little bit different and I'll show you the difference. So let's again, I'll just mask off something this time using topological masking. And then we have a very hard you know, mask here that I just very quickly did. So control clicking on your canvas blurs a mask, but it only blurs it in the direction of your mask. So you have to flip the mask by control clicking on your canvas and then control click on your geometry to blur it the other direction. If you don't wanna do all that though, you can just come in here to blur mask and that will blur it both directions. So control clicking blurs one way. I think you can see the difference here. And blur mask blurs both ways. So what I've done is I've set up a hotkey for this blur mask operation so that I can just do that whenever I want very quickly. Uh, other than that, you can also hold Control and Alt to sharpen a mask, and then click, Control, Alt, click. So that's the other little operation that you can do. But yes, very powerful masking tools in ZBrush. Some nice default hotkeys already set up. Good stuff, good stuff. No problem, my dude. All right. Well, like I said, we're kind of at the end of our time here today. Um, I'll give, you know, another minute or so here for some final, final cues or anything like that. But I just want to say thank you for coming and hanging out, guys. It's been awesome. Um, the VOD for this, again, if you guys missed anything or want to check out the, um, the process that we did at the beginning, talking about uh, the quick demonstration for hits and breaks and kind of interpreting form, uh, that'll be on the VOD. That'll be posted here soon, hopefully, over on the Pixelogic channel. But if not already, go ahead and click the uh, follow or subscribe button down below wherever you guys are watching, whether you're here on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook, or whatever. But let's see. What's the name of the tool you are using for reference? It is called Spotlight. It is a default tool in ZBrush. It is under Texture Spotlight right here. So what you do is you import an image, and then you select your image and you just click on this Add to Spotlight button, and then you have to close your light box. Uh, if you just look up ZBrush Spotlight Tutorial, I'm sure you can find something good that will describe all the neat little tools and functions that you can do with that guy. Awesome, 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 guys. Well, uh, again, for those who don't know, uh, I am Folygon. You can find my stuff just by Googling Folygon. I also have a Gumroad that I always shout out here at the end with some higher quality courses and tutorials that I put a lot more time into than I do here in just a quick little live stream. But I hope the live streams have been helpful for you. Uh, but yes, courses, tutorials, brushes, materials, base meshes, all sorts of awesome goodies here. Gumroad.com slash Folygon. I'll just quickly slap that link in there for you guys if you want to check it out. And I think that is where I will leave you guys. Again, you have a fantastic rest of your night, and I will see you guys on next Tuesday at 6 p.m. EST if you're around. Come and hang out. We'll do some more uh, more cool stuff, either with our pup shark here. Maybe we can finish him up. So we're pretty much, you know, we're at the final stages here. Or we can work on something new. I don't know. Maybe we can uh, come up with something something new, new idea. Maybe somebody can tweet a cool image to me. Maybe we can sculpt something. All right. I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful night. And 
Peace out.